The Invention of Harmony From the sweep of her skirts and the smell of rosemary, Sister Perpetua was clear that it was the abbess who had come to relieve her. Who else would enter another nun's cell without knocking? After three days of silence, the older woman's words drummed on her ears. You may rise. Sister Perpetua peeled herself from the flagstones. Now her limbs had per permission to move. She noticed how they ached. You may sit on the cot. Fearing she might faint if required to remain standing, Sister Perpetua was glad to perch on her straw pallet while the abbess towered above her. Have you repented, my child? She had prayed night and day to the Blessed Virgin, but she still didn't know whether God or the devil had kindled the fire in her throat. She stared at her toes, red and swollen with chilblains. I don't know what came over me, Reverend Mother. The ague, my child. God often sends some pestilence to test us during Lent. Even Sister Benedictus cried out last night. The abbess shivered. Now you've recovered from your fever, I'll send a novice with some gruel. You may join us for vespers. Sister Perpetua nodded. If the abbess considered her ready, she would gladly take her place in the choir stalls. At the door, the abbess hesitated. I've spoken to the bishop, and the bishop has spoken to the archbishop, so I have it on the highest authority. Plain chant is plain chant, and always will be. Each voice at the exact same pitch at precisely the same time.